This is Mouth Media Network, the business of being heard. Hi, my name is Romain Gaillard. I'm the founder of the Detox Market. I'm very, very excited to be here today and uh, share uh, uh, some of uh, my story. Um, what I love about beauty is that it's at the same time not important and so important. It's at the same time something where there's so many wrong things and so many right things. And so it's this uh, world and industry full of creative people. And, uh, and it's, it's just a very, very dynamic industry. So I'm very excited to be part of it. From New York City, you're listening to Beauty is Your Business, covering the intersection of innovation and business in the beauty industry. Welcome to another episode of Beauty is Your Business. This is Karen Moon. I am here with my co-host, Abby Wallet. Great to be here. And um, we're so excited to have you here today with us. There's a lot happening in clean beauty, obviously, but I love the authentic stories when it's like people were doing this before it was cool. Um, would love to hear about, you know, how you started the business and how your thoughts in the industry and how it's been evolving. Hi, Karen. Hi, uh, Abby. I'm so excited to be here today and, and uh, talk to you. It's been a long time since uh, last time I saw you and uh, so very excited to be here. I started Detox Market actually uh, over a decade ago, and uh, the the story is quite interesting. I got into that world through a friend of mine who is a, a breast cancer survivor, and she is the first one who educated me about toxicity uh, in the air, in the in the food you eat, and and in cosmetics, in personal care products. And um, when she told me that, I I thought she was a bit crazy because I grew up in France where you buy you know, skincare in a pharmacy and where you have rules for everything. So I, you know, I felt it couldn't be possible. And um, I did some research and found out a few things. The first one was that there were clearly some questionable ingredients um, in personal care in the U.S. Mm -hmm. It was very hard actually to read any, any inky. I, you know, kind of like challenge anyone to understand anything about what's in, what's in a personal care a product. The second thing is I found out that the industry was um, completely unregulated um, because according to the FDA, if it's cosmetics, then it doesn't get into your skin, so they don't need to regulate it. Um, and the last thing I found out, which for me was very interesting, is that there were a new generation of brands that were doing everything right. They had um, beautiful formulas. They were avoiding the questionable ingredients, but also focusing on the actives on the rare natural active ingredients. Uh, they also had beautiful packaging, great stories, um, great founders, uh, and the products were working, uh, which is important in, in, in beauty. And, uh, and I felt no one knew about it. People didn't know about the toxicity side, which was one side of the, the, the story, and for me, not necessarily the most important one. And, but they didn't know about the, the, the other side, which was that there were brands available that were beautiful. No, no one knew about it. And I felt I wanted to tell that story. So I found a space on Abbott Kinney, uh, a street in Venice in California. It was a beautiful space and kind of convinced uh, about 12 brands to, to, to do a pop-up with me to tell that story in a positive way. And that was the beginning of Detox Market. I think I was, when did you do that? When did that pop up happen? Uh, in November, the, the, the first day was November 1st, 2010. And it was supposed like, to be for two months. I think I was there when I remember it. I remember the logo. So let me ask you when you were envisioning, and that's such an early time for pop up, right? I don't even know if it was called a pop up at that time. It was just a curation of, of products. It was, were you near Space and K? Was that on Abbott Kinney? I can't remember. Do you remember that very original store? It's very small now. The, the, the Space and K was not on Abbott Kinney, not, not that I know. 
Um, and it, Abbott Kinney was a very, I would say, audacious street to, to, to pop in uh, to in 2010 for a beauty store because it was mostly known for art galleries and, yes. and, and, and restaurants and bars, a lot of great bars over there. So how did you come up with the curation and choose the first 12 brands? Because that was really early on in the clean, natural, so to speak, movement. It really wasn't talked about at that moment. How, would, how did you put this group together and initiate and launch your vision for the detox market? It, it was actually the most fun part of it was to to to, to put together this group of brands. Um, so I, I started ordering a, a lot of products and trying a lot of products. And I felt that what I wanted to do was um, to create a list of brands uh, where um, beauty was cleaner, more transparent, but also holistic. So um, we introduced beauty brands, but we also introduced other things like teas and matcha tea. So in, in the first pop-up, we had the matcha uh, uh, tea bar um, inside. We were educating people about matcha tea, which it's hard to believe. But back then, like I would say 99% of the, the people walking in had no idea or never heard about matcha tea. Um, we had a cold pressed juice uh, bar as well. We were educating people about like juicing and, 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 and the benefits of it. Again, same thing. People were like, cold pressed juice, what do you mean? Like, what is cold pressed? Like, uh, um, so it was very, very interesting. And, and for the brands, what I wanted to do is to select one per category, try a lot of them and just nail it to my favorite one. Um, so we made it very easy. Uh, I felt that because everything was new, like all the concept, the ingredients, clean beauty, the, the, the term clean beauty did not even exist. And, and I felt I wanted to, to really narrow down the curation to one brand to make it very easy. You want to switch to a, a, to a new kind of hair care that is all natural. We found this brand called Rawa out of uh, New York. Um, which is uh, now of, of, like a, a pretty known brand in the indie world, a beautiful like thing, but was for the first time actually on the West Coast when we, we took them. Um, for skincare, we had like uh, Audacity, um, Audacity Skincare, which was the first time also in, in retail at that time. We had a beautiful like brand of uh, a perfume called Honoré des Prés from, from Paris, um, which were very, very early on in the, uh, the natural uh, uh, kind of perfume world. So most of the brands we introduced, it was the first time they were getting into a retail or, or, or getting into uh, the, the West Coast. Well, that category has come a long way. Yeah, no, it's like you were, it's, it's just so authentic because like you were on top of everything that's popular now, you know, basically innovator, early adopter. Um, when you started the pop-up experience, you know, now I noticed you have, you know, a few stores, but also pop-up experiences. Are you using them as a test bed to see if there's full-time retail or is it nice to kind of keep it as a pop-up in this day and age so you can kind of test new ideas and bring newness? Like, how are you thinking about the pop-up versus your full store experience in New York, which is beautiful, by the way. Thank you. I I, I, I personally love pop-ups. They're, they're just like the, the most fun uh, things you can do. The whole concept of detox was this, a pop-up that moves from cities to cities, which is exactly what we did in the first few years. And all the design we had, the original design that you can still see uh, in the in our Beverly uh, Boulevard location in West Hollywood is was made of uh, uh, crates. Uh, actually agricultural crates that we sourced in downtown LA. Um, and the idea was that you put everything in crates, you can create a very kind of modular and, and, and fun environment and move it to, to somewhere else. Um, obviously, this model changed. Uh, you, you've been to the New York store like uh, a few times and this one is not a pop-up. You know, we, we worked on it for like uh, months and months and months. Um, but I, I love pop-ups because you can go into a, a place that is not necessarily the best place for you. You know, it's just a place that works for a certain time and create an experience, invite people and 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 really create connections. Uh, you are for sure testing a model and doing all of that, but it, it's it's more, more than that because it's uh, from an economical standpoint, pop-ups don't make sense. You cannot make money unless, you know, you're vertically integrated and a very, very... Uh, you know, um, I would say celebrity back type of brand, but for for like 
a brand like a detox market, like it, it, you, it, it doesn't make sense. It just makes sense to bring the community together. And in that sense, because it's, it's, um, it's, it's a pop-up, it's a, it has a limited, uh, 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 lifespan, then everyone is coming together. Uh, and I, I really love that part. I remember you also did events, like, how are you rethinking, like, you know, what are the new ideas you're bringing into a pop-up experience? Not, you know, instead of just, this is a shopping destination, right? Like bringing community together. Like what are some of the examples that you've done or are doing in your pop-ups? We, we, I, I can give you a lot of examples because we tried so many fun things. Um, one we did in Toronto, which I really liked, had like uh, naturopath doctors uh, on staff and uh, doing consultation. We had a second floor where, you know, you could go and do that. And we had a yoga studio in, inside as well. So it was kind of like, a, it was a big building in downtown Toronto. And so we had everything from the juice bar to a makeup station, like a skincare like area. And then you had like naturopath doctors and um, and the yoga studio. Um we, we did the, the, the one in New York, which is not a pop-up, but has a second floor that is just dedicated to events. We've done everything from the launch, uh, basically, of, uh, of the New York flagship. For a week, we had three events a day. Uh, and so it, the day could start with uh, 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 basically cold-pressed juices from Moon Juice uh, uh, um, uh, from California, which is one of our dear friends, um, uh, you know, uh, LA-based company. And so we, we got juices from there and we were making uh, uh, um, uh, smoothies. Uh, and then we would have like a, a brand like Innocence doing uh, some, um, some hairstyling and uh, we will finish with uh, meditation. And we did that for like a week. So the idea was to really kind of create this uh, environment that was very exciting for all the influencers and journalists to come and they will discover a little bit of our world and they could come at any time and experience something different. We worked on a lot of like, of course, um, uh, meet the makers. Uh, we like to do that where we redecorate the entire floor, the second floor, and create um, a unique experience uh, for our community to come. Usually it's very selective. We only allow about 10 to 12 people to sit down around the table and discuss with a brand founder that sometimes, you know, like usually wouldn't do that for like 10, 12 people, but as they are so happy to do it. And, um, and we use also, we, we shoot, uh, we create content around it uh, so we can um, amplify it and, uh, and, you know, send it to people who are not able to come. So we, we've done so many uh, formats. Uh, it, it's always for me the same is, is to create a place that is, um, a welcoming place where you feel like really welcome, a place where um, you discover something you, you need to discover. If you're going to go to an event for me, I mean, if I go somewhere, I want to discover something, you know, and the last part you get educated. And those are like the pillars of, uh, I think our experiences to feel welcome, to discover something and to get educated. Storytelling, or should I call it story selling? This week, we are buzzing about storytelling and how to sell your brand. The funny thing is, people remember story 22 times more than they remember fact. They just don't remember facts. It's how our brain is wired. I'm Denise Dante. And I'm Jessica Quick. And we are the founders and co owners of Buzz Beauty, spelled B E A U T E and the authors of Whipfire Money, an international guidebook for beauty brands. Storytelling is more memorable. Just think how many stories you have in your head at any given time. It emotionally engages you. It's one of the fun parts of why we love doing what we do, right, Denise? Absolutely. I think one of the things for me is the fragrance business does such a good job of storytelling. They take something that is so intangible and through great storytelling and imagery, make it real, which is particularly hard in today's digital world. I, I like to look at brands like Fleur and Kate Walsh's boyfriend. I think they do such a good job of really selling their story when you can't even smell the brand. Oh, no, I am well aware. You are constantly sending me their Instagram posts and or screenshots to have me see how they're doing it now. So I agree with you. Their storytelling is fantastic. 
I wonder if they read Donald Miller's book, Building a Story Brand. Such a good book. Such a good book. It lays out how to do this so well. It's almost like fragrance brands took a page right out of it. It's worth the read if anyone's looking to up their storytelling of their brand. So if you're looking for more resources and you just want to hang out with Denise and I, come on over to buzzbeauty.com or check us out on LinkedIn at buzzbeauty, B-E-A-U-T-E.com. You will find us there probably every day. Do you think that the world will embrace this concept as we're coming out of COVID, you know, things have really changed. Everything you said, sign me up. I'm there. I'm in. Let's go. It just sounds perfect and magical. Um, But because we've all been home for so long, what are your expectations as people start to move around again and come back into the world? Do you think that your concepts are going to be very, um, you know, people have become much more introspective. So do you think people are going to really be thinking and about these types of products? And are you seeing things in the market right now happening in a bigger way? So what, what we saw, uh, especially with the first lockdown about a, like a year ago, was that people had more time. Um, uh, and I'm, uh, I'm talking about everyone without small kids because I have small kids, I didn't have more time. But uh, uh, anyone without small kids had more time uh, to get educated, to learn about things. And, uh, they spend a lot of time on the internet and on the beauty space, the more you get educated, usually the more you get into the, the world of clean beauty, because you start looking at ingredients and, and, and you, you see that the actives are usually like more on the natural side and that clean beauty brands or green beauty brands are more efficient. And so we've seen a lot of people kind of switching to, to, to clean beauty during that time. I think that it was a great time also for people to, and that past year, you know, if there's anything good at of what happened in the past 12 months is it really helped people uh, reconnect uh, sometimes with their family, with themselves, with nature. And when you do that, you, um, it's again, you're like, I think you're going into that, that uh, journey towards uh, green beauty, towards wellness towards caring about you and caring about the environment. So um, that COVID kind of time was clearly an accelerator, I think, in, in for a lot of people. What's going to be interesting is to see how uh, people behave afterwards. Are they going to go back to normal? Are they going to go back to, we're talking about events, are going to, we, we haven't, we haven't done an event yet and we will, like we're working on some, but are, are, are people going to come? Are, are they going to be crazy to do an event or, or, or no one is going to show up? We don't know yet. It's going to be very interesting. I think people will come. I don't know if you've heard about revenge travel or revenge shopping, but it's happening. Like there is like lines at um, Louis Vuitton in um, London. And then I, it's just like, it's just, it's so interesting. I'm also in Miami right now and that's just a different alternate universe, but there's this innate thing around human connection and it's funny how easily people forget especially when they feel safe so hopefully that's cool and we're excited to come <laughs> um curious um want to like jump more into like the business side of things too and so like you know you've grown up with so many of these brands that also you know have started early on you know like just looking at um you know, some of the list of brands that you have today and also some new ones, but at least, you know, I'm curious to know, like, how you think about the evolution and then what, what you've seen, you know, in terms of success stories, what are the commonalities in the brands that are really winning in the marketplace? Um, because there, it is so crowded, right? And even in clean beauty, there was this white space, but now, still a mar- market, but there's so hard to tell the difference between the different brands. So curious, like what you've seen to be successful um, now that there's more competition and also like, what are you looking for in your buying team as you're looking to bring a brand on, you know, either online and retail and how do you think about all the channels? Absolutely. Um, it is very crowded. You are absolutely right. And to put things in perspective, when we first started Detox Market, um, it was actually difficult for me to find in some categories to find a brand that was uh, uh, doing a good enough job that I felt I wanted to to feature it. 
So for example, on the deodorant side, we didn't have a deodorant. We didn't have a clean deodorant in the first uh, detox market. So that's, uh, that's how far we went. And now we, I, I receive one new deodorant brand every day. On a daily basis, actually, you receive three or four uh, brands submission that um, want to get into detox market, and and so the, there, there's been an explosion of brands. Um, and you know, we can talk about it uh, a bit, but it's you know, it's mostly due to like uh, some changes in the industry where the barriers to entry are very low, and so you have a lot of people that just do private label and. Uh, uh, have a, a good connection in the branding agency and kind of spin a brand uh, within a few months. Of course, those are the brands we're not interested in. <laughs> that I, I don't think people should be really interested in those brands because they, they don't add a lot of uh, value, right? Um, what we really look for, um, the first thing is we have a filter of ingredients, so things we don't allow. Then we look at the positive side, meaning... Um, it's good to, to be made without certain ingredients, but what are you actually putting in it? Uh, what are like the actives? Why did you select these actives? How do they work together? What's the concentration? And so we, we have this conversation with, with brands. And if the brand founder is not involved in the formulation, usually they don't even know how to answer those questions. Then we look at the packaging, the product. Um, the story uh, are they uh, is it sustainable or not um, uh, are ingredients ethically sourced or not and then we try the product and uh, trying is obviously a very very important thing it's we we want products that work um, because if not it's uh, it you know makes every, everyone look look bad and no one wants a, a product that doesn't work so the the efficacy of a product is 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 key so it's a lot of steps, and that's how we get to basically 1% of what we try. Um, looking at what made brands successful, uh, I would say you have like kind of two, two types of brands at that point um, at Detox. You have brands that have been around for a long time that were very early on to that movement. And in skincare, you will have a brand like, uh, uh, in England, you will have a pie, for example, uh, Audacity, Tata Harper, you know, and so makeup, um, Ilia, RMS, uh, Kiawise, all those brands have been around for like about some 10, 12 years and, um, and you know, they're recognized, very recognized. And we really grew up with them. Like uh, uh, a lot of those brands, we were their first retailer. Um, I, you know, Ilia, which is one of the, the biggest success, I think, in kind of like clean beauty makeup right now uh started with six uh um, lipstick that's it in the first detox market we had six lipstick they were selling super well we they still actually look so like they're, they're, it's the same design and everything it but it it started with six right then you have like a second wave that is more recent that arrived uh with more industry people i would say uh that saw what was coming uh, because uh, uh, you had like uh, green beauty retailers that started and people started having this conversation and they came up with, with, um, with brands that, uh, you know, are more recent and, um, and, and we love those brands too. It's, they, they bring two different angle, but it's, uh, it's, it, it's both great. What, what I found out is the success of a brand is usually linked to the founder. And if the founder is uh, in clean beauty, if the founder is authentic, if it, if you know he or she is uh, very driven uh, uh, with a mission, uh, which is very important in in, in what we do, uh, then usually it's a factor of time. You know, if, if you have this dedication, this passion, the brand will eventually be successful. Uh, it can be accelerated with fundraising and this and that, but the the, the base of it is. The, the, the passion of the founder and all the brands I, you know, I told you about, like, you know, Audacity, Pi, um, um, RMS, Ilya, they, they all have this very passionate founder behind. That's such a good interpretation, right? Because when someone usually starts a brand like these cleaner concepts it's usually what i've known from years in the business it's because someone had something mm -hmm. that they had to deal with 
that they wanted to change, right? So it's so interesting today. Now there's so much more information. Everybody can gather whatever they need at the, you know, Google in three seconds and learn. We don't know if it's always truthful, but it's so interesting to, you know, see how this industry, this subset area has really exploded. And I think it's just going to keep getting larger and larger as the world evolves. I'm curious to know about, you know, so a lot of these brands, funny, we just had the CEO of Kaiser Weiss on um, just right before you joined. She's terrific. Jill, um, do you find that the younger generation is as into these cleaner, um, more eco-conscious brands as as much as the older generation or older people looking to learn more? Are they more set in their ways? Like, where is it at on the demographic scale? Because there is so much information um, and there's so much product out there. What What is your takeaway on that? It's very interesting. From a consumer standpoint, we, you know, it's always, you always try to understand who is, who is your consumer, uh, who is uh, your follower, who is, uh, uh, who is a fan. Um, what we found out for, for Detox Market is um, we have a very loyal um, um, type of customer, uh, people who have been shopping with us for years and who trust us because they know that um, throughout this whole, like, I mean, we've been around for, for a decade. For five years, we were talking about clean beauty and, <laughs> and everyone thought we were crazy. And, but we didn't change a word of what we were saying. We didn't change a word of our mission. And, um, uh, and, and, and so we have this very solid base of loyal customers. And if you look at our customers now, we, we have different profiles. You, you, have, um, um, you have people coming because they have a health issue or someone you know, around them had a health issue. And so they started looking really into what they eat what they put on their skin, on their hair, you know, and, and uh, how they clean their home. And so when you start asking yourself those questions, you uh, usually end up in a, uh, in a place like Detox Market and, and, and you have people like us who are truly passionate about educating people and getting people to try something new and, and better, a better beauty, which is, which is what we do. Then we have also um, uh, consumers, and that was kind of like the big rise of, of clean beauty for me is, um, consumers that were um, in this lifestyle. Um, we were uh, drinking cold pressed juices in the morning, going to yoga, uh, caring about uh, the environment, about what they what they are eating. Uh, a lot of vegan people um, uh, for those two things of like health and sustainability. And when you're interested in this, clean beauty is just an extension of this lifestyle. And, um, and we saw a lot of that with a newer generation of millennials, uh, uh, you know, a, a few years ago, we saw that rise. And I always give this example because for me, it was, um, I, I saw it a few times and, uh, uh, myself when I was in the stores is you, you see, um, a younger generation, someone who's like 28, you know, 29, 30, bringing their parents to the detox market and tell them, let me educate you. Let me tell you that you need to try this lipstick, uh, that you need to try this like face cream or sunscreen and that you cannot use chemical sunscreens because of this and this and this. And this is a complete opposite thing that used to happen before. I grew up in France where um, usually it's the parents bringing the, 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 the children to or like the teenagers to maybe select a perfume, maybe... Uh, try uh, a, a deodorant or try like um, a cleanser that works for them. And so it was a reverse kind of like uh, a model that, that we saw happening. And the last part, uh, I would say, are um, people coming to detox market, not n even knowing what we stand for. They don't even know that we, we, we are like, you know, about clean beauty. We are about sustainability. We are about inclusivity. They are just looking for something that works and they heard that uh, their friend went to detox market and tried a lipstick that was amazing or tried like a cleanser that was amazing. And so uh, sometimes we talk to these people and they, they're like, oh, really? You're natural? I didn't know. And so um, that's when, when, I, when we meet this third category, that's where I think uh, we're winning because we have people that are truly 
only coming for the formulations, for the brands, for the experience we provide. And, um, and that's really, really important because at the end of the day, uh, what slowed down clean beauty at the beginning was the idea that it didn't work or you were, you had to kind of compromise, uh, efficacy to go into, uh, uh, a natural beauty, which is, uh, absolutely not the case. That's so interesting. What about, um, the online shopper, how do you navigate that in terms of content and sharing, um, information to help people find products and brands that can help them in different ways? Is that a big part of your business model, the content? Piece? Yes, absolutely. We've been always attached to uh, creating relevant content uh, and useful content through like all different channels. It could be, you know, Instagram, Facebook, uh, uh, YouTube, or on our own, um, own website. Uh, we usually uh, um, work with our detox ambassadors who are like uh, uh, team members. Um, there's one thing at detox is a lot of our um, uh, team members are like passionate about Korean beauty and they usually work at detox because uh, they love the mission, because they love the brands, they love the product. Uh, they're not, they're not, they're not a detox uh, for me. They're really a detox for uh, the, this passion that they have for for products and and uh, and every time I talk to anyone in the team, I'm I'm so stunned about this level of of knowledge and passion. And it's it's this knowledge you can only get if you really love what you're doing. Because if not, there's no way you're gonna go and and dig more into learning about the the benefits of this specific ingredients versus another. You wrote. You're rolling, Mark. Oh, yes, I am. Uh, <laughs> hey, hey, everybody. I'm Mark Rako. And I'm Puffin Ball. And we are two of the hosts of Fashion Is Your Business, which is a weekly show. And in part, it's about fashion tech, but it's also about the intersection of business and technology, innovation, e-commerce, business strategy, you name it, we probably talk about it. We've had many people on the show over the last six years, we've been we've not missed a week. Every week we've had at least one show. That's more than 350 episodes uh, with some of the foremost fashion technology. Wait, have, have we, we uh, I, I don't actually know the stat, Are, have we ever missed a week? I don't think we've ever missed a week in one That's way or another crazy. presenting some value. But uh, but enough about us. Let's talk about you. Wow. <laughs> um, no, look, if I'm going to throw my promo out there, I'll say that as a retail strategist, uh, we go very deep into um, really curating the conversation. So whether they be investors or futurists, strategists, um, a lot of technology founders, I mean, uh, brand leaders, the, the conversations and the wealth and the, the spectrum of people that have been on the show are, are incredible. And to think back on the last six years, which I, I actually did not know it was six years. I was going to say five, but still um, unbelievable uh, the the breadth of information that's in here. And yeah, uh, I've learned a ton. So I'm assuming other folks would learn a ton as well. Look, to us, it's been like a master class covering everything from textiles to retail and everything in between. It covers business news from startups to conglomerates and the show is a fun and accessible morning radio vibe uh we have fun and you will too but the main thing is whether or not you are in the fashion industry or fashion technology there's something here for everybody you'll hear us every tuesday without fail on fashion is your business and guess what you can find it pretty much anywhere you find your best podcasts everywhere from spotify to apple to stitcher to google all of the things. All of the things. All Fashion the things. is your business. And now it's hitting the pan. This is one of our favorite parts of the show where we get to ask you a little bit more about you. So to figure out who gets to ask the first question, we're going to take a spin at the salon chair. And it lands on Abby. So I, it's funny. I was just reading an article about French pharmacies and how there are these amazing products, which we've always known since I'm like much younger, whenever friends would go to France, I'd always say, oh, pick this up in the drugstore. And since you grew up there, I'm just curious 
um, the f- products that you grew up with in France, do you still use them? Are there things that you love that you found in the drugstore? Was that somewhat of an inspiration for you to create the detox market? I don't know. I just, I'm so fascinated by the French skincare routine and how beautiful they all look and where they shop at the drugstore. It's interesting. It's a different mindset, you know? Um, it, it is a very different mindset. And I've actually, if you look at how uh, people in France buy beauty products, it's, it's, it's very different. Uh, we worked on that recently um, because we introduced uh, uh, what, I, what I call the French capsule, which is a selection of French brands um, that were this next generation of French brands that were, I felt, doing everything uh, great. Um, so we had all clean beauty brands, great founders. It was a very diverse group of founders from France um, and also um, uh, different price points. And I wanted to tell that that journey of someone in Paris that uh, buys beauty. Uh, they don't go to one store and buy everything. It's a mix of different channels and uh, inspirations. And so you have people come, like, you know, the same day you'll have someone buying something at Monop, which is a uh, uh, Monoprix, which is like a food store, but has also like beauty products. And so they will buy something kind of a fairly cheap, but clean. Uh, then they'll walk in a, in a in a neighborhood like Le Marais, which is a very uh, cool place in 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 Paris, and they will end up in in a store like usually standalone for like with one brand. And so, uh, the brand we selected uh, was Regans, which is a great uh, clean beauty brand based out of Paris. Uh, and then they'll end up at Le Bon Marché, right? And um, and buy a very uh, beautiful, expensive brand. Uh, so you know, it could be for us was we had two selection, which was a Mawena, uh, which is an amazing kind of a, a beautiful um, upscale skincare line, uh, and uh, and La Bouche Rouge, uh, which is um, a blue beauty uh, a brand based out of Paris. Uh, they they I mean they, they the level of sophistication of the brand is is insane. And then they'll go to the pharmacy and buy some aspirins and, and, and a cleanser at the same time. So it's, it's, this journey is like, makes no sense sometimes from a, a North American like uh, kind of uh, 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 point of view, but like it, it's very French, you know, in the, in, in the bag of a, of a, a French woman, you will find a, you know, a, a, a five euro a moisturizer along with a, a, a 60 euro uh, lipstick. It makes no sense, but it kind of works. Actually, when you said it, it almost like clicked for me. It made a ton of sense. Cause I remember like I used to always go to the pharmacy to buy Tila Cleric. Like you get, I don't know if it's still around, but they're like the best foundations and you can get at Barney's or there basically for a while. Um, but then when you said pharmacy, I'm like, yeah, skin is like health, but we don't, most of the times don't think about it that way. So. We'll take another spin of the salon chair. And it lands on me. Um, I'm wondering, I love, um, it's always like you have your go-to people who are always on top of everything and knows what's next. I'm curious on the wellness side, um, like what's something new around self-care, whether it's like a new fitness thing or meditation or like what's exciting for you to like unwind or what do you think is next that you're excited about that you personally like to use too? doesn't have to be a product. It's, um, I, I can tell you because I, I spend, obviously I'm spending a lot of time myself thinking about that. Um, and, um, the, the foundation of detox market at the beginning was uh, detox your life. So make it a real holistic experience and that in your life, you had detox, your beauty, detox, your body, detox, your kitchen. And, um, one that I think is, uh, and we've, we've seen it especially accelerated with COVID, but one of uh, our foundation was detox your mind. And uh, it is so important uh, for beauty. You know, uh, we always think about beauty as just, you know, putting skincare and makeup, but just such a small portion of it. Beauty is actually how confident you are. If you ask, I think they did a survey like uh, in France uh, many years ago, and, and, and they ask people like, define like, what is a beautiful like woman that you know and most of the answers were about confidence like oh this very confident person right and um and detox your mind is one of the first uh, uh thing we should focus on is trying to have like peaceful of mind and 
and mental health has been a very big conversation with COVID. It was before, of course, but COVID like, you know, was very complicated for a lot of people. And so I think that anything around uh, mental health uh, and detox your mind, uh, I think is going to be critical and something to look into. I personally uh, meditate uh, every morning. It's uh, And I started uh, with the lockdown. I was not doing it before. I, I think for two years I was saying, I'm, I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. But, you know, I was traveling, doing this, that. And I didn't realize it takes literally 10 minutes. You can download Calm or like uh, Headspace or something like that. And it's like for 10 minutes, it completely uh, reset your day. It's, it, it's incredible. And, and so I, I think anything around like mental health is going to be key. Totally. I can agree with that. Um, so do you have any final thoughts for our listeners? I, I started a, a, a few companies. I, you know, I, I used to be in tech and then I've been in beauty now for like so long and I love so much um, uh, what, what, what we're doing and, what, and what's happening in the beauty space. Um, my only advice, if, if you're trying to, to, to create a brand in, in that space is really spend the time. Try to be as authentic as possible and really spend the time to create something unique because there's just so much out there uh, that can be discouraging, but it's it's there's still like so much to do. I think so. Uh, it's it's all about like a brand, like a, a, a cosmetic a beauty brand is all about. I think the the the, the vision of the, the the founder. We we see brands all the time, and so really spend the time to have like the the the, the great vision. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, do you, what's the best way for listeners? To get in touch, um, the, the best way I think would be something like LinkedIn, like a, a, a message there, or like I'm, I'm I'm not plugged on social media so much uh, except on LinkedIn. Ah, following your detox mantra, I get it. Good idea. I wish I could do that. It's well, great. thank you so much for um, joining us today. You know, we meet with so many, um, you know, guests that we bring on the show. Many of the guests, um, you know, the brands you talked about. And that, you know, you sell at your store, but also we get tons of requests all the time. So I think, you know, this is like super valuable advice for emerging, you know, entrepreneurs in the indie beauty space. So um, really appreciate it. Um, thank you so much. And thanks to Abby. Um, this is so much fun. Couldn't do this without you and wouldn't want to otherwise. So, you know, really enjoyed this with you guys. Too bad we don't have like a moon juice or something to, you know, do this on a Friday afternoon, like yeah. happy hour. but. <laughs> I think you've um, mellowed us out, so we're very mellow now. I know. I'm like feeling very <laughs> calm now. It's good. It's a good way to end the day. We need you. Can we meditate with you? Let's yes, do it. we should meditate every morning. <laughs> Can you best. guide us through? Okay. <laughs> awesome. You have a very calming voice. He has a very calming voice, doesn't he? That's a good radio thing, right? So, or podcast. Yeah, it's <laughs> thank great. you, and yeah, thank absolutely. you so much for having me. It. it was a it was a great uh, moment, and um, and yeah, thanks. Awesome, and thank thanks, you. Lastly, to our listeners for joining us on this episode of Beauty Is Your Business. We will see you next time. Hugs and kisses. This has been Beauty Is Your Business, produced by Mouth Media Network. Copyright 2021. Keep in touch on Instagram and Facebook at Mouth Media Network and find prior episodes at beautyisyourbusiness.com and wherever the best podcasts are found. Your brand message can be on this show. Email us to find out more at podcast at mouthmedianetwork.com. Thank you for listening.